Our story begins in the heart of wintertime in the English countryside with a carriage carrying a young girl who's going to live with her uncle. Having grown up in the Bahamas, she's not too impressed with the view out the window. Then again, this girl doesn't seem to like much of anything. Mary, shall we play some charades to pass the time until we... No, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Okay, perhaps you should know a little bit about where you're going to live. What do you know about your Uncle Crayfish? I know he lives where it's freezing, and I bet there's no place to shop. <coughs> now, Mary, you must try to remember your manners. You're a very lucky girl to be going to live at Crayfish Manor. Most children who lose their parents to headhunting pygmy tribes must go to work in bowling alleys. <laughs> yes, Mary's parents had indeed met an untimely fate at the hands of hostile, tiny natives. But before that, they had ignored poor Mary all her life while having nannies give her everything she wanted. And so it was a frail, weak-bodied, world-class a spoiled brat of a girl who finally arrived at her Uncle Crayfish's mansion. <sighs> well, don't just stand there like lumps. Come on in already. And don't you forget to wipe your feet. Headlock, please show Miss Mary to her room. I'll send up her bags. Isn't my Uncle Crayfish going to meet me? Mr. Crayfish doesn't see anyone. Not ever. What do you mean? Your uncle is very ill and very crabby. Most of the year he isn't here at all, and when he is, he shuts himself up in the West Wing and sees no one. <laughs> that's him, over there. Only Butler Bob is allowed to see him, and that's because he's from New Jersey and understands that kind of attitude. He's been that way ever since his lovely wife passed away in this very house ten years ago. And that's all you need to know about it. Now have your tea and go to bed. And remember, all the other rooms in the house are locked and off limits to you. Hmm. How dare she! I hate animals! I won't have them! <gasps> you are a horrid, spoiled little brat, young lady. It's a wonder your parents didn't hand you over to the pygmies. Good night. Bad night! I hope the bed bugs bite you, bossy! Next morning, Mary finds that rest and relaxation are not Crayfish Manor's strong points. Good morning, Miss Mary. I thought you was going to sleep all day. Yeah, I was. You woke me up. And learn too soon. Now out to that bed and let's get some breakfast in you. Come on now, get your clothes on, Missy. Now what's that you're doing there? I'm waiting for you to come and dress me. <laughs> oh my, do you mean to tell me you don't even know how to dress yourself, Miss Mary? Of course I don't. At home, my maid always dresses me, and she doesn't talk back. Well, here you're going to have to do it yourself. <laughs> Heaven knows I've enough to do around here already. Imagine a girl your age acting so helpless. It makes you look soft in the head, it does. Mary couldn't believe a lowly servant was talking to her like this. At home in the island, she would have given her maid a good slap. But this Martha had arms like Mike Tyson, and Mary decided maybe she would let her get away with it, just this once. <gasps> What's wrong, Miss Mary? Why aren't you eating your porridge? Is that what this stuff is called? Well, I'm not going to eat it. I never eat breakfast. Besides, this stuff looks like motor oil. Bring me a bowl of chocolate frosted sugar bombs. Oh, no, those sugary cereals are why you have such a pencil neck. What you need is this good hot porridge in you. Though I see now what you mean about motor oil. Go play outside now. That'll give you some appetite. But it's freezing out there. But given the choice between going outside and eating English cuisine... Miss Mary! Don't forget now, you can play anywhere on the ground you like. But 
But you mustn't go near the last garden, the one that's all locked up. All locked up? Why lock up a garden? Mary was wondering, when suddenly... Huh? Hello. You must be the new spoiled br- I mean the new kid. <laughs> That's right. Who are you? I'm the gardener, of course. Who do you think I was? That with scissor hands or something? Gardener? Then you can tell me about the mysterious garden that's all locked up. Not me. Don't know anything about it. <gasps> You're a shrub head. Don't go poking your nose around where it's not one of their little missies. So much fuss over a garden, Manny wondered. And where was the bottom half of that gardener anyway? As the days passed, Mary spent more and more time outside. When it was either that or play go fish with crabby old Mrs. Headlock. But as Martha had predicted, the healthy country air began to have an effect on her. That was some good stuff, Martha. Thank Heavens, you. Heavens, Miss Mary. You actually ate all of that. I knew the outdoors would help, but I never thought you'd be hungry enough to eat cream of liver soup. Hmm. I think I will go bug that crowded gardener. Bye-bye. Now, Mary, remember. I know, I know. Don't go near the last flower garden. I'll remember. That evening, the mansion was quiet, but Mary had a bee in her bonnet, so to speak. Gee, I wonder, what could be so bad about going into a garden? Hey, you can't even see it from here. It's very late. You should be going to bed now, Miss Mary. Martha, I'm going to lose it if I don't find out about that garden. Please tell me why it's locked up. I'm sorry. I can't tell you that. I made a super secret voodoo blood oath not to. But if you promise not to tell a soul, I'll spill the beans. Hmm? Your uncle had a very beautiful wife, Venus Crayfish, and that last garden was her favorite. She planted it herself with all sorts of lovely flowers. But most of them were plastic ones because she never really got the hang of water in them. She and your uncle were very much in love, and they spent hours and hours in that garden. But one day, while she was there practicing her trapeze act alone, the swing broke, and she was very badly hurt. She kicked the bucket soon after, and Mr. Crayfish could never bear to watch trapeze artists again. He also began to hate the garden because it reminded him of her. That's why no one ever speaks of it, and why your uncle is such a miserable old crab. He locked up the garden and buried the key somewhere. And no one's been in it now for ten years. I'm ten years old. I know it may seem a little goofy, but that's rich folks for you. Now don't let on I told you, or I'll be gone faster than Millie Vanilli. <laughs> The garden's been neglected for ten years, just like me. There must be some kind of parallel here. <laughs> what was that? That sounded like someone crying. Down there. <laughs> It's coming from behind that door. Who could be in here? What are you doing here, you horrid little girl? I... I heard something. I heard someone crying in there. You only heard the wind. Now get back to your room before I give you a wedgie.
The next day brought the first hint of spring to the air, and Mary was even happier to be outside away from Mrs. Headlock. You may have noticed that Mary's not real big on following rules. You don't suppose she's looking for the forbidden garden, do you? You're looking much better, Miss Mary. Thanks, Shrubhead. <laughs> those trees! I've never noticed those before. Huh? It's a dead end. There's no way to get over to them. Looks like somebody's found a worm. <laughs> Hello there, birds. I bet you know what the secret garden is. What? <laughs> That's no worm. Unless it's wearing a wristwatch. Oh, it's a key! A really old one, too! What's it doing out here? Could this be the key to the garden? The key Uncle Crayfish buried? Who am I asking all these questions to? Sure! It must be the one! But it's not even worth a nickel if I can't find the door. I think we've all waited just about long enough to see this garden. Let's get some wind in here and find it, shall we? Well, what do you know? Mary rushed to the door and pulled away the vines, revealing a cute little silhouette of George Washington. Just kidding. It was a lock into which the key fit perfectly. Mary closed the door behind her to cover her tracks and looked around in awe at the magnificent silent garden. You can put off your weeding for a little while, but ten years? That's trouble. What a shame. All these rose bushes are probably dead by now. Wait a minute. Are these new buds? I can't tell. What if? What if they were new buds and roses grew from them? Oh, wow, I'd be so happy. Somehow I'll bring flowers back to this place. Here in my secret garden. Martha? How would I go about getting some things from the store? What kinds of things, dear? Oh, some gum and a brush and a shovel. A shovel? What on earth would you be needing a shovel for, Miss Mary? Well, I was thinking I might do a little gardening, actually. That's a wonderful idea. My brother Deacon can get you everything you need. Wholesale. Uh, you've been saving your allowance. I've got the cash. Please don't say anything about his flute playing, okay? Hello there, Martha. And you must be Miss Mary from the Bahamas. I see Martha wasn't kidding about that pencil neck of yours. Nice to meet you, too. I bought you a first-rate shovel and some sunflower seeds. <laughs> <laughs> See? The great thing with these babies is you can plant them or just plain eat them. <laughs> Whoa, move slowly or you'll frighten them. Can I feed them? Sure. I always thought animals were kind of furry and icky, but I like yours. You good at keeping secrets, Deacon? Sure, one time I kept one for a whole afternoon. Great! Come on! Mush! Mary and her new friend Deacon headed back to the house, while Martha stood like a lump back in the forest. Well, I think she did. You don't see her here, do you? Here we are. Whoa! I've never seen a garden so overgrown before. Shh! If Mrs. Headlock finds us here, she'll have a hissy fit. Sorry. Do you think it's possible to bring this garden back to life, Deacon? Will the flowers still grow? Well, it all depends. With some weeding and if you've got good soil, like this, the good black kind that won't wash out of your pants. And look, there are lots of daffodil and rose bulbs here. They're alive? Huh? Sure. 
Will you help me? What's in it for me? I'll listen to your lousy flute playing without making faces. All right! We'll make the best secret garden no one ever saw! <laughs> it's that pathetic crying again. Mary was so consumed by her curiosity, she didn't even care if Mrs. Headlock showed up again. I think I'll kick her right in the shins. All this creeping around, it's probably just a tape recorder. could be coming from one little boy. Who the heck are you, anyway? I thought I was the only kid in this house. They call me Colic. Colic Crayfish. Wow, you're a crayfish? I know, it's a crummy family name, but what can you do? Yes, but I thought that... <gasps> well, that can only mean that you're Uncle Crayfish's son. His blob, you mean? <laughs> Sorry I insulted you, but how come I never knew my uncle had a boy? That's because I'm so ill and I can't move. Ow, 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 and father won't allow anyone to talk about me. Mm, there sure are a lot of secrets in this house. What kind of an illness is it? Colic? It's called Lumpus Inbedus McWhiney Syndrome. Oh. I'm doomed. I probably won't even live for another year. It hurts just to think. Bummer. Well, Colic, hey, it's been a lot of laughs, but I think maybe I'd better dash. But I haven't told you all my symptoms yet. I'll have my own if I get caught here. Sleep tight. Will you come back again? Sure. But no more crying, right? The next day in the garden, Mary told Deacon what had happened. He's Uncle Crayfish's son. Says he can't walk. So all those old stories are really true? You mean to tell me you already knew about him? Everyone around here has heard stories about this house. That there was a sick boy locked up in there that no one ever saw or talked to. I don't believe he's really that sick. Do you think he's gonna die? Well, if he did, he would sure blow the happy ending to this show. I wonder if we could bring Colic into this garden. Maybe it would make him better. <gasps> That's a great idea! Well, it worked for you, so it might work for Colic. <laughs> He'll forget about being sick. We just have to figure out a way to get him down here. Yeah, I guess we can't ask Mrs. Headlock to carry him. <laughs> but why can't we use your squeaky old wagon to sneak Colic out of the house? That idea is so crazy, it just might work. Let's do it then. Let's have a dirt fight to celebrate! <laughs> the coast is clear. Are you sure that's the room? I don't hear any crying. Nope. Nothing. Maybe he's just taking a break. Colic, it's me, Mary. <gasps> Uh oh. What's the matter, Mary? I'm over here. I'm really glad you came back, Mary. I was afraid I might never see you again. And I'm glad you haven't croaked. <laughs> yeah, then I never would have met you. Who are you? This is my friend Deacon, Martha's brother. Hi, Colic. <laughs> huh? Hold still. 
And you'll probably live. <laughs> so these are puppy dogs. <laughs> <laughs> right, those are dogs. You really don't get out much, do you, Colic? Want to come outside? <gasps> you mean outdoors? The fresh air would be good for you. Look what it's done for Mary. Why it's fastened up her pencil neck. I don't know, guys. I've never been outdoors in my whole life. It's bad for me. I just know it. I'm real sick, you know. You keep talking about how sick you are, and you're making it come true, Colic. Look. Guess what this key goes to? Dad's new Mercedes? No. This is the key to a secret garden that's been hidden for ten years. It will be full of beautiful roses and other flowers when spring comes, and no one but us knows. I want to see it! Now! Not right now, but soon we have a plan! Mrs. Hemlock will never know what hit her! <laughs> <laughs> A week went by, and finally the big day came. Colic was so excited about seeing the secret garden, he had only been crying half the time. And it was a warm spring day. Although they're still wearing coats, I guess it's a fashion thing. We're all set to go, Colic. Mrs. Head locks out like a light. Here goes nothing. Come on! they went, and young Colic was immediately struck by the majesty and grace of nature. That cloud looks like a jelly bean, and that one's a cockroach. I can smell someone barbecuing. Here, Colic, I'll let you turn the key. Thanks! Oh, I feel all tingly inside. You sure there's no alarm on this thing? I disconnected the bee's nest. Okay. There. What's that smell? Is that what roses smell like? It's, it's not, not garlic. garlic. Go on in, Colic. Seeing the magnificent garden and all the roses, Colic was speechless. But that didn't last very long. I can't believe how much work you two have done. I can't believe how beautiful this is. I can't believe how good I'm feeling inside. See? Oh. <laughs> what are those things? Those are the guard bees I was talking about. So many friends here in the garden. And everything is so alive. It makes me want to be alive too. Hmm. Hmm. Very strange. Is he much worse, Doctor? Well, there's a definite change in his condition. Oh, it sounds terrible. Terrible? His condition has improved a hundred percent. But how is that possible? His color is better. His breathing is better. It doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> how is his appetite? Well, now that you mention it, we've been serving his porridge in gallon drums. Sheesh! Kids, go figure. I'm getting out of this racket. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it great that the garden has made you better? Yeah, now my crime doesn't wake everyone up anymore. Time for the next step. Time for you to try and walk now, Colic. But how? I can't even stand up because of the lump in my back. Why are you so sure you have a lump? Just because your father has one? Come on, let's take a look. Grab that side, Deacon. I'm cold. Oh, stop. <sighs> Feel anything? Wow. There's nothing there. Colic, your back is perfectly fine. It is? Come on, try to stand up. Okay. Yes! That's it! You're doing it, Colic! One foot after the other. Oh, I can't believe I'm really doing this. I'm walking! On my own two feet! <laughs> Don't get cocky, kiddo. May not seem like much, but remember, just this morning, his feet were only good for propping up his TV tray. 
Later that day, Mr. Crayfish himself returned from another day of scowling at his employees when he heard a most unfamiliar sound. Uh, Freeman! We'll have an agent! We'll have a gardening TV show! Mm-hmm! And we'll have Colic handle all the heavy work! Look at him go! Hard to believe he was so helpless, just... Huh? What's the meaning of this? Who are you, whippersnappers? Hmm? Father, it's me! Who ever heard of vandals doing the gardening? Why aren't you three out sticking gum on people's chairs or making crank phone calls? Wait a minute. Did you call me father? That's right, I'm calling, sir. But how can this be true? Huh? Huh? Oh, it is you, Colic, my son. It's really you. Don't, Dad. You'll wreck the knees of your pants. You sound like my mother. But uh, how can this be? You were such a sick boy. <laughs> it was all in my mind. That's my boy. Which doctor finally figured it out? But it was that guy Freud, eh? No, Dad. The doctors were all at the lunch. It was the garden. Hmm? The garden? That's right. And my friend Mary, who got me to quit crying. And Deacon and his two puppy dogs. They brought me to the garden, and I realized I wasn't dying at all. We both thank you. Aw, uh, we just got them all dirty. This beautiful garden was the cure. Here's the key in case you decide to bury it again, Uncle. But this garden's done us a lot of good, and we think you should leave it open from now on. You're right. It will stay open. It's been a long time for this garden. I remember what a happy place it used to be. I know. We'll open it to children everywhere, and we'll, uh, charge them money. Yeah, a buck a minute. And when we get rid of the money, we'll throw them out. Uncle? And we... Oh. <laughs> Well, crabby attitudes die hard, but Mary got her way and the secret garden became a place for children to run and play and listen to the flute music. Ugh.